good result then for Newcastle as they take the victory uh, to win by three goals to one. Uh, of course, when we talked about top four places, we talked about these teams maybe vying for it come the end of the season. Given Newcastle's poor run, they've still got a lot of work to do. But for Villa, they need to put the brakes on this free four at the moment. They still remain fourth. However, Spurs can go level on points now with Aston Villa. Of course, they're in action later on in the week. Uh, Don, from a Newcastle perspective, your childhood side, what a result. What a result, Dan. I was at uh, Craven Cottage on Saturday for the FA Cup win. And it felt as though with Jacob Murphy back in the side, Almiron, you know, there was talks of him going to Saudi. Well, their window closes tomorrow, so I can't see that move happening. They were back to their best against Fulham. And then they went away. They got a clean sheet against Fulham. Um, I think it was more or less the exact same 11 that started the game tonight. So it shows you they're strong. There's players starting to come back from the treatment table, and they're looking good again. That back line, they are giants when you think of Dan Byrne and Sven Botman, mm. uh, Fabian Scher, who got two tonight, and obviously Kieran Trippier with his quality. Um, the, only, the only, I think... The, 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 they, they lost Isak later on in the game, which is obviously a concern, and then Gordon played through the middle. So they're still leaking one or two injuries. Dubravka had a leg strapped up later on and sort of limped off in the 90th in the minute, well, sort of limped through the game. But the players are starting to come back. They're strong. Shaka knows when you play games in the Premier League, Dan, it can turn very, very quickly. And they've got a clean sheet against Fulham. They've gone 3-1 tonight. Longstaff missed a sitter towards the end, so it should have been four or could have been four. Then the games that they've got coming up, they've got Luton and they've got Forest. So there's no reason now why Newcastle can't be op optimistic they can put a run together. It's incredible. Shall you take a look at their run leading into this? Obviously, Don mentioned the Fulham game, but before that, he had four straight defeats in the Premier League. Yeah, uh, and, and a, a couple of weeks ago, I said that, that Newcastle had this run of games that included Villa, included Arsenal, but about 10 others in the, in the next 12 were very winnable games. Yeah. And it was important that with players coming back off the treatment table that they make, they make the most of this. I thought this should have been a tougher test uh, than, than it actually panned out to be and why the opening two goals came from set pieces, no less than Newcastle deserved. And, and, and I felt Villa were a little bit poor to start with. In, in, in that, I thought Villa allowed Newcastle to press them really high up the park and, and kind of take the onus of this game to Aston Villa, which really surprised me for a team you spoke about their home record coming into it and just invited that. And, and it, it, had, uh, it had Newcastle playing with a confidence at Villa Park that I certainly didn't expect should, uh, early on. And then after about 15, 20 minutes, they started to press and it became a little bit more of an even game. But at that point, Newcastle are in their stride. Newcastle are playing with confidence. And, and while I mentioned, as I mentioned, the opening two goals come from, from set pieces. I thought Newcastle were, were really bright. Uh, Gordon, Almiron, Murphy just continues to, 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 to shine so, so brightly in terms, of, in terms of Newcastle on the counter-attack and playing and pressing high up and, and with pace. Uh, and, and from then, in, in, in truth, again, well, maybe 3-1 maybe might, might be a little bit kind. I, I don't think anybody questions that Newcastle were easily the better of the two teams. Um, on, on the night. And we're seeing those injuries, Sevilla, just start to catch up with them a bit, Don. Yeah, I think Pau Torres is a miss, you know. Yeah. I, I think Clement Longley is a good defender, but he's not Pau Torres. I think that's the miss. I mean, they're, they're, they've got one or two injuries. They've still got a good team. They've still got a fantastic manager, but it, the results, momentum, they're having their little blip. Uh, the Drew, I think, against Sheffield United, I think they drew against Everton as well. They've chucked a few points away. They were leading 2-0, don't forget, against Man United. They lost that game 3-2 as well. So the season that they're having is amazing, but it could have been so much more, and it still can be, but they're just having their blip at the sort of wrong time. So they've got to try and get players back. I'm not sure if they'll make any moves in the transfer window from now till the window closes. Um, so they need to get back on the training ground, try and get back on the horse, try and churn out a win, even a scruffy win, because they're having a, they're having a torrid time of late. And what's intriguing is Tottenham are in action against Brentford tomorrow. We know Brentford's form isn't the best coming into this. Now, that would put them level on points. And I think eight points then would separate them and West Ham in, in sixth. I think it'd be fair to say we've got a two-horse race for a top four place. Is that yeah, fair, Shaq? I, I, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think certainly between, between West Ham and Newcastle, and, and while Newcastle are three points back and West Ham have that game in hand, I just feel Newcastle with everybody back is, is the more likely... And the bookies have Spurs plan. as the favourites. I, right now, given the way Villa are trending, I, I totally agree. I, I just thought, particularly um, to start the game, he, Villa looked like a team that, that are slightly lacking confidence. And it's only late on, um, 
they're trailing two and, and um, Leon Bailey comes on that, that I thought he started to see the best of Villa. So that, that's concerning. Their form and that what seems to be a lack of confidence. While I think we've seen the worst of Spurs. They've had their injury problems mm. um, and, and have somehow come through it. Even, even despite the criticism at the time, with the way Postecoglou had a team playing, with that high pressing, regarded, even though he didn't have the pace with, with Van der Ven uh, defensively, you know who they are. And, and they've come through that wonderfully well. And then with players coming back, and I'm thinking primarily Hyung Min Son from, from, from Asia, um, they, they're the ones more likely to finish in the top four than, than Villa, certainly. Don't say 50-50, Don. <laughs> it was 50-50 the other day, but now go on. I'll give you a 60-40 in Tottenham's favour. Oh, really? That's quite a big jump, Don. Well, that's what I do, Dan. I, I'm bold in my predictions. I try to keep the numbers. I try to keep the numbers even. At the same time, I don't try and confuse myself with these. Uh, there has to be a numbers. zero in the end. Yeah. I'm bold in yes. my maths. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. There's got to be a zero. I tell you what, you would have been very bold today to say that Luton Town would win by four goals to nil, but that's Ooh. exactly what happened. I think pretty much everyone had Luton down, didn't they? When they yeah. came up, oh, it's great for them. You know, nice little stadium. Look, you've got to walk through a garden, whatever. But they are out of the relegation zone. It's quite extraordinary. Sheffield United, meanwhile, were 2-0 up against Crystal Palace. They lost 3-2. Burnley are very much in the mix. They've only got Manchester City tomorrow. No worries there. Everton drew 0-0 against Fulham. I didn't watch that, but I'm very happy that I didn't. <laughs> uh, uh, Luton then out of the relegation zone, but Forest are in it, Brentford are in it, Crystal Palace with a big win for them to lift them up. But what a performance this was from Luton, which of course had the dream start, Don, when they were 2-0 up within the first three minutes. And the atmosphere was off the charts. It was amazing. I didn't see that one coming, I must admit. I mean, Luton were brilliant. Brighton were all over the place, which is unlike a Deserby side. But it's so refreshing, I think, having or watching Luton and the Rob Edwards side with Mick Harford sort of higher up there who have said from day one, we're going to do it our way. We're not going to be pretty. We're going to launch it. We're going to try and play when we can. They're a good side. They've got good technicians. Ross Barkley's playing well and Andros Townsend and Alfie Doughty at left back. But when we need to go long and when we need to pump it, we'll do it. And they've done exactly that tonight. They were superb. So who the heck's going down, Shaq? Good Lord, uh, that, that's a really good question. I, I think the bottom two are, are, are going. Yep. I, I, I just don't see Burnley playing their way out of trouble. When, when Everton had that 10-point deduction, I think we were unanimous in saying this is the best season to get a 10-point deduction, you'll, you'll be fine. But they now back, find themselves back in the bottom three. Um, I, I still... Uh, uh, Matt Turner's a real problem for Forrest, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I, I was about to say, I, I still feel Everton have enough to get themselves out of that bottom three. Nottingham Forest, for me, are just trending entirely in the wrong direction. And while they try to steady the ship, I, I, I just feel that, that the goalkeeping issue that they've kind of had to endure and that time is made worse for themselves, I, I feel that comes back to cost them. I, I, I saw a Nottingham Forest team today, even at home, that, all right, it's against Arsenal, but would have, been, would have celebrated a point. Um, and, and if you're that close to the bottom three, if you're trending the direction that they are, you, at home, you have got to show some kind of desire. I didn't see it until until uh, Arsenal scored their second goal. Um, so of everybody there, I am most concerned about Nottingham Forest. Who's going down, Don? Do you know my worry, Dan, is Everton are still getting investigated, so they might get a more or a bigger points deduction, and that would absolutely crucify the club. If they get another five or ten points, that's probably them gone. So they're, they're fighting, they're just getting on with it. I hear Sean Dyke saying there's nothing we can do, we can't control the uncontrollables. All we can do is try and get results on the pitch. I think the result of the night, in a strange sort of way, was Crystal Palace's win, because yeah. they've been horrendous lately. If they had a loss tonight or drew against Sheffield United, I would have had them, not favourites, but close, sailing close to the win to go down. To answer your question, I still think it's between uh, Everton and Luton. Uh, meanwhile, of course, the action will continue tomorrow. Uh, oh, before we do that, let's just promote the FA Cup that's coming up. Of course, we've got all the, uh, all the next round matches for you. Uh, we'll I'll try and sell it better when we get there. Uh, Blackburn, Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me some time to give work me, on, give me some on time my enthusiasm. To work some spin on this, because it's going to take a lot of spin. Uh, matches are to be played uh, the week, uh, the end of, of February.